What is up everybody and welcome to my ultimate beginner's guide to the Abyssal Sire. Throughout this guide, I'm going to be explaining to you guys how to fight the Abyssal Sire, give you an overview of the fight, explain its mechanics, and show you exactly what you'll need to actually fight the Abyssal Sire. First things first, the Abyssal Sire is a Slayer boss. This boss can only be killed while you are on a Slayer a task assigned from one of the Slayer Masters that are scattered throughout RuneScape. There are two ways to reach the Abyssal Sire, and the first is going to be just north of Edgeville through the Zamrock Mage who teleports you to the Abyss. The only problem with this is it will put a skull on you, and we don't want to be fighting the Abyssal Sire while sculled. What you will want to do is use a Fairy Ring, and you're going to want to use the Fairy Ring code DIP, which will teleport you to the other realm of the Abyssal Nexus. Once you arrive at the Abyssal Nexus, there are four possible ways that you can go, but they all lead to an Abyssal Sire, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. The Abyssal Sire isn't exactly a hard boss to fight, but I do have some general skill requirements that I recommend that you have. When it comes to melee, you're going to want to have at least a level 80 in your attack, strength, and defense skills. As for ranged, you will also want to have level 80. And when it comes to prayer, you're going to want to have at least level 70 with the piety prayer unlocked. You're also going to be using magic during this fight, and you will be using the Ancient Spellbook. At a bare minimum, I recommend that you have at least level 76 magic for the Shadow Blitz spell. Now as far as a higher recommendation is concerned, it is very nice to have level 92 magic for the Blood Barrage spell and level 88 magic for the Shadow Barrage spell, and when we get into the mechanics of this boss, I'll explain. So now let's go ahead and move on into the gear setup. Now since this is a beginner's guide, I'm going to be using some lower tier gear that is pretty affordable except for one item in this setup. As for the gear that I'm currently wearing, like I said earlier, you're going to have to do this only on a Slayer task, so I will be using a Slayer helmet. You will want the Slayer helmet to be imbued, so you do get the bonus from the imbue, which would be 15% to range, accuracy, and damage. I'm also going to be using a Fire Cape and an Amulet of Fury. If you do have an Amulet of Torture, you can substitute the Fury for the Torture. In the Blessing slot, I have Arata's Blessing, which requires the Elite Diary from Karen to have, but any other Blessing will also work. As for the best in slot weapon, you're going to be using the Arc Light here. The Arc Light gives additional damage to anything that is considered a demon. The offhand will be the Dragon Defender, Torax Plate Body and Plate Legs, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, and this can also be replaced with Primordial Boots if you have them, or Guardian Boots, and a Berserker's Ring imbued. Over in the inventory, you'll see some additional gear, which is a Bandos Dehide top and bottom, but any Dehide top and bottom will work. You can even use Black Dehide top and bottom. The prayer bonus from this is not that important. Ava's Assembler, but an Accumulator or Ranging Cape will also work. And I'm using a Toxic Blowpipe for my ranged weapon, but you can also use a Magic Short Bow imbued if you're low on cash, or even a Crystal Bow. As for the Dragon Warhammer, this is pretty expensive, but it is necessary to have. If you don't have a Dragon Warhammer and you can afford a Bandos God Sword, pick up the Bandos God Sword because some special attack with a defense reduction is better than none. If you don't have either of these items, well, it's not really going to help to not lower the defense, but it's not going to be too bad either. Your kills are just going to be a little bit longer. As for the rest of the inventory, you can see I have a Super Combat Potion, a Ranging Potion, an Antidote Plus Plus to cure Poison, 5 Super Restores, 2 Stamina Potions, 8 Sharks, air runes, a rune pouch, a draman staff, and a construction cape. If you don't have a construction cape, you'll want to use house teleports. And in the rune pouch, I have blood runes, soul runes, and death runes. And On the screen now, you can see the Abyssal Sire's chamber. On the west side, you can see two vents with green smoke coming out of them. This is the Abyssal Sire's respiratory system. On the east side, there are two identical vents to the west side. You will also see six tentacles with eyeballs on them, and these you will want to avoid at all costs. Near the middle of the screenshot, you can see two marked tiles. I recommend you also mark these tiles if you're using RuneLight or OS Buddy because they will make your life a lot easier when clicking when we get to that part of the guide. Now we can go ahead and move on into the different mechanics that this boss possesses. Now first thing I want to go over is the boss's defense level. Now I mentioned just a minute ago that you're going to want to have a Dragon Warhammer or a Bandos God Sword. As for the Dragon Warhammer, the special attack reduces defense by 30% if it hits. It can hit a 1 or a 70. Doesn't matter, as long as it hits, it will reduce defense by 30%.
Now this can be compounded with a second attack, but it will only reduce the defense by 30% of the current defense level. So the Abyssal Sire has a defense level of 250. If you land one special attack, you will reduce that defense to 175. And if you land your second special attack, that defense will be further reduced to 123, giving you a lot easier time with the fight. The first mechanic is how to stun or put to sleep the Abyssal Sire. You'll need to do this to stop the tentacles from whacking you as you run around the room. You'll do this with shadow spells. With the, each shadow spell comes a percentage chance that you'll be able to stun the Sire. With the shadow rush spell you have a 25% chance, burst 50, blitz 75, and at shadow barrage you have a 100% chance to stun the Abyssal Sire. Now I do recommend you have the level 88, but you should be able to get by with Shadow Blitz, which will give you that 75% chance. When you do this, the Abyssal Sire will be stunned for a certain amount of time, around 20 to 25 seconds. Once the Abyssal Sire is stunned, you will move on to start to take down the respiratory system. Now I usually only do two respiratory systems at a time. I go west, and then to the east, and then I wait for it to become unstunned, stun it again, and then do the southern respiratory systems. It just makes it a little bit easier than trying to rush around getting more than two done at a time. Next are going to be the phase two mechanics where you will be fighting the Abyssal Sire in melee form. Now there are three different mechanics associated with this phase. The first one being the Abyssal Spawn. Every now and then the Abyssal Sire will spawn something and you will have to kill it. If you don't kill this, it will kind of evolve into a higher level one and it'll inflict damage on you while you're trying to kill the Sire in phase two. Now this doesn't always happen, but there is a chance that it can happen while you're fighting its melee form. The next mechanic is gonna be the poison. Underneath of you, the Abyssal Sire can spawn a poison which will rapidly damage you for a high amount. The third mechanic is gonna be the tentacles you see on his back. He will whip these and it does hit through melee prayer. It doesn't hit super high, but it can deal damage to you, so you'll want to watch out for that. The final phase, which is phase 3 of the Abyssal Sire fight, is going to have a couple more mechanics. Now as for this, the Abyssal Sire is going to move into the center of the room where the marked tiles are, and he's going to root himself. Once he roots himself, he's going to start spawning poison underneath of your feet. What you'll have to do here is you're going to attack the Abyssal Sire and then move to the opposite square that is marked, attack it again, move back to the original square, and attack it again. You're going to want to repeat this process until you move it on into the next phase of the fight. After you've inflicted enough damage on the Abyssal Sire, you're going to be teleported. Now you're going to be teleported right in front of the Abyssal Sire, so as soon as you see this teleport animation complete, you are going to immediately run south. The Abyssal Sire is going to open up, and if you are anywhere in the area when it opens up, you can take up to 72 damage from the explosion. After you've avoided the explosion, we're going to circle back to the poison that appears underneath of your feet. This is going to happen again, and it will happen three times, and then you'll have a slight break. Now while you're avoiding this, you also may want to run back and cast a blood barrage on all of the abyssal minions that are walking around. This is a good time to get your HP back up as you're running away from the explosion. Alright, so I think I have covered everything to get you started, so now we can go ahead and check out a kill clip and I will talk you guys through the kill. I'm going to be starting the fight with my ranging gear on because we're going to be ranging the Abyssal Sire's respiratory system first. Drink a dose of your stamina potion because it is a little bit of a long run. I'll go ahead and fast forward to the beginning of the fight now. So now I have arrived at the chamber and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on my long range on my blowpipe and I'm going to want to poke the Abyssal Demon once to get it to wake up. You will then use your shadow spell on it to stun it. Once the Abyssal Sire is stunned, I will drink a dose of my Ranging Potion and begin to range the vents. After ranging the vents, I have 5 seconds before the Sire wakes up again, so I'm just going to wait cast another shadow barrage on it and continue with the southern vents. Going into phase two of the fight, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my melee gear with my dragon warhammer, or if you're using a Bandos God Sword, you'll take that out. Activate your special attack and hope that you hit so you can reduce some defense levels. 
So there you can see an abyssal spawn that comes out. After I lay my special attacks, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that so it doesn't grow into a bigger spawn and cause me a lot of trouble. Right there you could see how it used the tentacles on its back to do 23 damage to me through my melee prayer. So like I said, you're going to want to watch out for that. So now I've done enough damage, we're going to start phase 3 here. Abyssal Sire is going to plant itself. And it's going to start to spawn the poison underneath of my feet. I walked a little bit north there, so it's under the Abyssal Sire. And now you can see it here. And I'm going to be moving back and forth. There's the teleport. I'm going to run away as it opens up because that explosion will hurt. And this is the point where you want to use Blood Barrage to maybe heal up some HP if you're low. You can also see the poison spawning under my feet once again. And after three times, it will stop for a little bit. After this, it's smooth sailing just to finish off the kill, and that is it. Easy peasy, guys. After the kill is finished, I'm going to go ahead and teleport back to my house, recharge my stats so I don't have to use a bunch of supplies, hit the fairy ring to head back, and continue on with my Abyssal Demon task at the Abyssal Sire. So I think that is just about going to wrap up this guide. I think I have given you guys everything you need to get started at the Abyssal Sire. Remember, if you do have better gear, you can obviously use that. I just want to do this in the easiest way and one of the more cheaper ways possible just to show everybody that it can be done. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really help videos popularity. And if you haven't done so yet, you can tap that subscribe button on your way out for me. And if you would like to, you can check out the link in the description below to my Patreon. Any of your pledges help support my channel and keep the content coming. With that, guys, I will see you guys on the next guide. Take it easy, everybody.